Yeah, this is a good fish. Ooh. Oh, he's there! He's there! He's there! Oh, oh my yeah. god! Oh, yeah. yeah, baby! He's you only got a real one. You go down. No, don't. He might be here. Oh, jeez! No good. Whoa! Uh, I don't see us as fighting like a crappie. Hey. Oh! Oh! So John, what uh, what leader are you ringing up here this morning? Just a, a typical shark leader, 275 pound test wire. That's what I walk my dog with. Mm -hmm. 10 knot shark Whoa. hook. And we're putting stingers on them for the leopards. It's so. just a sh straight shank J hook, right? Yep. Big 10 knot. Now, some people are gonna say having a 10 knot hook for a leopard shark is overkill. But what John just explained to Joey over here is that you know we got big suit fins going around here we got big seven gills big cow sharks seven gill cow sharks same difference but you don't want to be undergunned in case you get into that 100 pound or even like the record you had how heavy was that 322 pounds a 322 pound seven gill if you get up on a smaller rig like this and have a smaller hook and you hook a fish like that you could be screwed you can lose oh, yeah. that fish you don't get nearly as big or deep as a bite that you know, that you really need to hang on to a fish. How long did that fight take you? It was 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So, can you imagine 25 minutes into a fight <laughs> and no. losing your fish just because you were undergunned? And the leopard sharks have no problem eating a tenno, do they? No, not yeah, at all. We've caught them like this the same way over years, rigging up with midshipmen and everything. But uh, once we get into it, we're going to break down the baits for you guys along the way, get out there, uh, get some fish in the boat, and we'll go over a little bit more about rigging. All right, so now what Joey's got rigged up here is a midshipman. This is a really popular bait of choice out here in the San Francisco Bay for these bigger sharks. A lot of the time that's going to keep those smaller fish off that. I mean, look at the size of my hand. I'm a big dude. That's a big bait right here. So, Joey, go ahead and break down this rig for us, how exactly this is put together and why. Well, why we have this so long and such a big 270-pound leader is you don't know what you're going to get out here. You could be getting a suit fin, you could be getting a seven gill. There's a lot of big sharks out here with a lot of big teeth, and if you have something small, it's going to break it, you know? Yeah, and a lot of the time these sharks will roll up the leader too, or they'll just keep on choking it down. And so that's what that real long leader is imperative for, and that's a wire coated leader there, that 275. Yeah. Now, the hooks here, what's going on with the hooks? Well, we got a nine knot straight shank hook right here. You could tell that's a very, very heavy hook. Mm -hmm. here and then we got a trap hook right here with the treble on the back of the tail just in case for those short striking fish you know awesome so we make sure we got hooks in their mouth at all times oh yeah and all bites you're hoping when you swing it you're sticking them because we got hooks all over this bad boy big gear big fish let's drop some bait down and uh go get on there we go there's the bead yeah, Stop storming. These guys got to be leopard. Got to be 36 inches to keep. Mm -hmm. So we'll get this one back in the water. Really common shark out here in the bay. It's actually considered to be one of the best eating sharks here in the bay. You know, I grew up eating those things. I'm probably gonna be letting the majority of my fish go today. Well, I don't know. We might eat a couple, but uh, leopard shark, man. We used to just stake them up and grill them. Really good eating fish, but. A lot of fun to catch too. It's like a real powerful big old channel cat or something that <laughs> back down. You seen that little guy, he was bulldogging me pretty good on there, so wait until we get a big one. Now popular locations for catching these guys. Just a few of them here. San Mateo Bridge has always been pretty good all around there in those deeper spots. Um, off the Richmond Point, look for some holes out there. The Hunters Point area has always been hot for shark fishing. Um, the deep water channel over by the Dumbarton Bridge. I grew up in that area and caught a ton of leopard sharks out there right off that deeper shipping channel. Right there. Come here. Come here. Oh, seven good. Yeah! Now! Oh! One! One in the side! Get him, Joey! Get some, uh... My seven gill to start the day off with. All right, so this here is a cow shark. Some people refer to them as seven gill. It's the same thing, seven gill shark, cow shark, same fish here. You can see right here, they actually have the seven gills. Now, 
Very few sharks are forward feeders in the San Francisco Bay, meaning they can run a fish down and eat live bait. Um, they still prefer to eat off the bottom here. Even the soup fins prefer to eat off the bottom, though, in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, actually, you can get out there and mooch for those things. But you can see the big toothy critter right here, man. This guy's got some nice chompers on him. It was one a little bit smaller than this that decided to ring with the end, leave with the end of my ring finger back when I was in my early 20s. But nice fish here. You can see that they have the black spots, nice dark gray, really good eating fish. What we're using here today is these Arts Custom Sliders. Um, basically what they are is there's some type of a plastic on the outside, but they got this brass insert that's uh, welded onto this little eye right here. These things are nearly destructible. I mean, we can cast backlash if you, if you end up doing that. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't realize why a good quality slider is yeah. important for a professional fisherman like Joe and myself. Sliders, the plastic sliders break. Yep. And oftentimes they could be sharp, it could put a sharp edge, it could potentially lose you a really good quality fish. Mm -hmm. And when it's your job to Joey, get the rod, big fish, you, you, need, you need a quality slider like this. Yeah, well it's, it's important because if you're spending $3 on a weight, oh, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden you uh, cast or get hooked up or whatnot and it pops mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. you know, that's three bucks a weight. Oh, especially out here on the bay. You need a lot of weight to get yeah. down. Yeah. You know, how, how heavy are we using today? Uh, these ones are 16s. 16 you know, ounce. On the bottom. That's um, not cheap. You yeah, don't want to lose that on a plastic yeah. slider. Yeah, so we just upgraded to these. Um, and the guy Art's been very generous to take care of us on these and he, he does put you know good snaps on it You know, and he does have other sizes um, He's got this new one that he came out with looks like a big old olive <clears throat> uh, He's using these bad boys right here for uh, trolling for salmon uh, Two to two and a half three pound balls um, No problems, you know, and there's a lot of less tangles for whatever reason, you uh -huh. know, we're not getting a lot of tangles on the cast Yeah, I think more of the uh, that rounded shape more of that oval shape mm -hmm. instead of those little sharp squared edges where you can potentially Flick your line and tangle up into yeah, your leader a little bit know. more. So a pretty pretty cool swivel there, man Yeah, it's pretty I mean, good. Pretty you cool know. sliding swivel. Yeah, he also has you know Bunch of different styles of it. He has a little smaller one that they're using for halibut and use it for stripers. You know, if you're bait uh, bait fishing on the shore or whatnot, uh, a awesome. lot of guys are getting these little tiny ones. But um, yeah, so you know, it's just a great product that he's came out with. A lot of the other captains are also using them. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to Boat Country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Wellcraft, Low and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair, and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. I'm sure you've already heard of the Miller Punch Weight for penetrating the heaviest cover with ease for those big old bass. And have you heard of the Red One trolling motor assist cable to either add on or replace those chintzy ones that they come with? You have now. I'm tired of switching in between split ring tools or breaking off fingernails? We'll grab a Red One wedgie and it'll handle all those bad boys with ease. Visit RedOneSystems.com. Did you know that P-Line makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with P-Line's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. Hey sportsmen, have you ever wanted an all-in-one cleaning tool for small game or fish? Well look no further, the Sportsman Field Tool offers an all-in-one stainless steel construction with all the bells and whistles. From a fillet knife, snip, snub knife, gut rake, and a scaler, in its indestructible case, you really can't go wrong. Check your local retailers or visit sportsmanfieldtool.com. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. All right, this shark right here is a little guy. This is a little smooth hound right here. You can see the green eyes on them. A lot of people just think this is a sand shark. You know, if you want to call it a sand shark, go ahead. Uh, but out here in the bay, you have the smooth hounds and you have the dogfish. The dogfish look similar to this. Similar to this. Oftentimes the eye's not as green and they have a little horn right here in front of that dorsal fin that lays right up against it. But let's let this guy go. <laughs> 
Now your depth is imperative. If you're fishing, you know, 40 feet and less, you're gonna be catching a lot of smooth hounds, dogfish, a variety of smaller sharks. You're gonna find more rays in there. You're gonna get bit a whole lot more if you're fishing shallower than 40 feet deep. Once you start venturing into that 50, 60, 80, 90, 100 foot holes, you're gonna find a better class of sharks. Oftentimes you're gonna find more leopards in those deeper holes, more seven gills, although the seven gills will roam the flats um, as well, but those deeper holes is where you're gonna find your better fish. Hey Zach, if you were sitting on Santa Claus's lap and he got would you get off? Yes. Ah! <laughs> you get off on that? Uh, <laughs> oh my God, that's disgusting, man. Now pretty much the best time to target these sharks is, you know, July, August, September, but you can start catching them pretty good from late spring, um, you know, all the way into mid-fall, even later fall sometimes. It just really depends. Once that fresh water starts dumping into the system, uh, your bite's going to start fading away. Um, throughout the winter months, there's a lot more crab in the system and more bait stealers, so it's really not worth fishing for them at that time. There we go. Just slice them down the middle and hook them on. Oh, he's coming right to the bait. All right, so that's it for the day. We didn't really get on them really good, but we had an earthquake this morning. And for some reason, maybe we're thinking that messed up the bite or, you know, it was on fire the last couple of days like Joe was telling me. And uh, we just really couldn't get on them the way we wanted to today. But we're going to come back out. We still got a nice seven gill. A nice leopard. Well, John did. Come over here, John, real quick. Now, for those of you who don't know, John actually holds the world record seven gill shark. So we have the guy out here that's capable of making the big one come to the boat, right? You just use a special aura. Is, yeah. is it just like a body language you use on them? I don't use any language. No, no language at all, man. Straight to the bait, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll post up a picture right here of his fish so you guys can check that out. Uh, you know, but we'll be back out here. Joe, once again, I had a great time, brother. Uh, Joey and Zach over here, deckhand in the boat. John, is really nice to meet you, man. Yep. And uh, I'll attach the other portion of the video to, end, to the end of it right here. Thanks for watching, guys. So I rarely get the opportunity to fish with my family, but a few of my cousins were actually in town meeting up together and mentioned they wanted to go fishing with me and they've never had the chance to. So I said, by all means, come on out. And Joe and John were happy to oblige by taking them out that day and taking a day off work because I always like to sneak out during the week. And uh, we got to put them on a lot of awesome fish here. That's the rod. Yep, yep, I got it. Wrap. There you go. There he goes. Okay, Came off. Oh, oh don't slack one tiny bit ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that fish broke us off on the piley, but well, at least oh well. The pilings out there. So, <laughs> so we got started off, really and uh, because I of... asked Jamie how big of a fish he's ever caught before, and he goes, I don't know, like a like a bass, you know, medium sized bass. So we yeah, threw some squid good. out to let him hook up with a ray, and I said, there's a really, really slim chance you'll actually land that fish inside the marina here, but uh, he got to feel what a big fish pulls like. So now let's go get some sharks. That's right. It's your guys' is now, by the way. Nice. Two of us. Your guys' is. <laughs> <laughs> So when it comes to the baits that we're selecting out here, um, salmon bellies work really good for your bigger sharks, midshipment, uh, mackerel, sardines, those bigger baits are going to get you a bigger fish and it's harder for those smaller sharks to pick them off faster. If you offer a smaller bait, there's a whole lot more small sharks than there is big ones, so that's what you're going to hook up on 90% uh, of the time if you have that tiny bait. If you use squid, you're gonna catch uh, you're gonna catch some bat rays out here. They're fun to catch, but they can become a nuisance. Uh, you can avoid them by dropping down into those real deeper holes. When you get beyond you know 70, 80 foot deep, uh, you're gonna find a whole lot less rays, but they're fun to catch. So if you're using squid, you're gonna catch rays. Um, the sharks do love the squid. If you got a newbie out there, throw on a squid. They'll catch a heck of a lot of fish. Now people often ask me, how much weight are you using? Well, that's really dependent on the current. I just want to make sure that I'm 100% positive that my weight in my bait is within contact of the bottom at all times. 
Now you're gonna see Joe mention using a 16 ounce weight in here. That's because he has a whole entire salmon head. There's a lot of current resistance against that. So he needs that extra weight. So basically the base that, uh, the weights that I'm gonna suggest, anywhere from eight ounce up to a pound, that 16 ounce weight. Hang with us guys, we'll be right back. Have you had the opportunity to try out the only waterproof, near weightless, shapeable, hands-free LED light on the market? That's right, I'm talking about the Lou Reviewer, the most versatile, multi-functioning LED light available. Choose from its alligator clip or the super strong rare earth magnet that best suits your needs. I guess the only question is, how do you lure view? Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if say. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Come towards me. You want me to go towards you? Yep, yeah, yep, the yep, fish yeah. is going that way. You gotta follow it's the fish. Way. Come around, come under. Come under. Under, under, under. Watch the cameraman's in the way. Oh, jeez. You're okay. Don't be left slack in that bad boy. Let's put a gap in for you. That thing sounds like it's making some rough noise. Oh, oh. It might be in Oh, jeez. Here, I can go take it. I got you. I think he's going to fly enough. Yeah, he's like full. Look at him, man. He is hooked on tail. Now what do I do? Leopard sharks have a tendency of coming in backwards. Yeah. Yep. Just it's a strong. Okay, I got him. I got him. Yeah. Can I put him back in? Yep. Just... And we're catching. Out here in the San Francisco Bay, doing a little catching, the leopard. He's coming in backwards. So this is a baby soup fin shark right here, also known as taupe. They cut the fins off for that famous soup fin. Actually a nice forward feeding bay shark right there. These guys will run live bait down. It's one of the few sharks in the bay that'll do that. This guy here's a baby, so let's let him go. That's a real good one. How you doing? I'll lip it, I'm ready. Don't even sweat it. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, she's fighting dirty. Nice, dude. Ooh. Chunky monkey. That's what we're doing right now, right? I'll make, I'll make sure you guys sports make sure field tool, baby. Yeah. All day. <laughs> I got my own. So when it comes to your setup for these San Francisco Bay sharks, you really want a rod that's roughly six and a half to seven and a half foot. Um, more often than not, you want to use a fast action and a rod that's at least rated to handle 25 to 30 pound line. You know, 25 pound um, P-Line CXX is what I use a lot of the time. Or I'm uh, going up to like a 40 pound if I'm solely targeting the bigger seven gills or bigger taupe sharks. Uh, from there, the opposite that I would use is the braided line. In the braided line choices, I'm using 65 pound to 80 pound braid. Um, I like that. Sometimes you can go up to 100 if you're fishing for the bigger beast just to make sure you're a little bit more comfortable with what you're using there. Uh, most of the standard, you know, bay reels that you're using have about 15 to 20 pound drag on them. Uh, which is more than adequate to handle 90% of the sharks that you're catching out here. Uh, but once again, if you're targeting the bigger beast, you can go up to, you know, a 35, 40, 50 pound rated reel, um, you know, to really slow them down and put the brakes on them. Oh, it's a big leopard! Big leopard! Gaff! 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 Your turn to look bad over here. Oh, he's running! Look at all the drag killing! Look at all that! Oh. He just went back down about 20 feet. 
Let's look at the handle. One time, bub. Yeah! 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 Come on! Come on! Yeah! Get him! Lean back, lean back. Quit cranking down. Now reel down. There you go. Lean back. Nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Nice. 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 Hold that position. Let's just see what's up. Quick, quick, go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Keep it here. Keep it here. Keep it here. Keep it here. Oh, we're here. Back up. Back up. Walk back. I'm going to be lying. What's the way? I'm going to get the camera. And kids, you see this man? That's why you don't do drugs. <laughs> When you're born high like this, you don't need drugs, baby. It's all about positive energy in fishing. That's how you get it done. Get some! Okay. That's it, that's it. There you go, there you go. We got three on. How's that one feel? That one feels a little heavier. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, baby. He says, I caught this one. My hook set. Don't let that fish play games, Dustin. That's why I can't. I actually play playground. <laughs> Too many games. <laughs> hey, how many jump, 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 jump. Oh, wow. Oh. Come on, Dustin. You guys I'm trying, but I'm trying to stay out of his line. Go, 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 go! Oh, crap! Let's <laughs> took it out of the rod alone. Huh? Uh, I don't know. Oh, nice. Nice one. Nice one. Oh, nice one. Oh, nice one. Oh, nice one. Oh, nice Man, this sportsman fill tool is pretty nice. Which way do you have this, Joey? Out here, out here, out here. Back on the San Francisco Bay. I'm taking my cousins out today. Dustin, Donnie, Jamie, back out here with Captain Joe and Captain Bub on the legal limit. Having entirely too much fun. Oh, the mail too is sticking. Yeah, might as well throw them in. Come on, baby. Say, yeah. Uh, real, 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 real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking light off. Hey, give me the other glove in there, dude. Where's that? It's inside there. Where's the glove, huh? Right here. Yeah. Oh, no. So, after hammering out a ton of sharks out there, I said, I wanted to put my cousins on so the most powerful thing they felt. So we're in here inside the marina mud marlin fishing. You will literally catch maybe one out of six that you hook inside here because they're that powerful. I just had one cut into my thumb trying to thumb the spool. Now Joe's doing some wicked tuna line assist because the drag's not even strong enough to support these things. Absolutely awesome. He's coming, he's coming or he broke he's off. No, he's coming. He he going, bro? I think he broke off. I don't know. No, no he's still there. Wait. He's just coming. He's just cruising. Get ready. Second wave is coming as soon as he turns. Oh, yeah, he's still there. Here he comes. Come on. Stay turn, fast on him. Stay bro. fast on him. Stay fast. Stay fast. Just relax and try to find a smooth motion. Oh, man. Get him out of there. Keep rolling, buddy. Was that a fight, bro? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't worry. Nick said he's going to put yeah. new uh, braid on all the rods. So what we're going to do is just chop off all these fins. Take the fish, flip it around. Cut until you get to the 
to the dead center. Just lay it on along the side. Get a nice fillet, no meat wasted. These fish just got a big cartilage that runs down the middle, just like a sturgeon. And if you get in here close, I'll show it to you. All it is is a cartilage bone. And once we're done, this is all you have left. You just take the, the belly meat right off. You know, a lot of people don't want to eat the belly meat, so we're just used to cutting it off. Here we go. Daniel, third shark oh, happens to be a seven gill cow shark. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Go ahead and give him a launch. Adios, All right, so we decided to head back out for a third day for this film here with my buddies from boat country, Brent and Daniel. Man, they've never caught sharks before, and I said, this is gonna be an absolute blast, fellas. Oh man, and we put the hurt. No, not really. Seven gill. Oh, that's a key for seven gill. Raise your rod up, bring them over here. You want this? Yeah. Wanna keep it? Yeah. Okay. Walk this way. Walk this way. Walk this way. Careful. That one's out right. Oh. Oh, yeah. They're like, they're like, pretty textured. Mm -hmm. Pretty soup fan. But, but soup fan right here. Oh, sure. Look at the teeth on that guy. I don't know if we can get him to pop open here. Oh yeah. See that pretty jaw right there? This was a, a hunk of salmon. Oh man. Oh, oh, okay, Daniel. Yeah, yes, yeah, stay all the way on this side of the boat. Is that another seven gill? Yeah, that's a big cut. Oh man. This you're taking this fish. <laughs> He's not giving an option there. Man. Oh, sorry. You're okay, come on back, buddy. Got him in the I'm gonna do something really reckless. Step back over there. Okay, hold on, hold on. Get back, get away. I'm, I'm bringing him in. I'm bringing him in. Get back. Okay. Get ready to position this weight. Okay. You ready? You ready? You ready? Hold on, hold on, now, when it comes to selecting your leaders out here, commonly in the past, guys used to use 90 pound, 100 pound on, wire, on. but I honestly suggest a minimal of 150 up to about that 300 pound range, depending on what you're fishing for. If you're fishing for the bigger seven gill, of course, go up higher. Um, you know, if you're just targeting leopard sharks or the smaller ones in the flats, then of course you can drop down a little bit if you want. Uh, when it comes to your standard J hooks, anywhere from 7 to 12 aught, you know, are really, really good. Once again, leopard sharks can go down to that 7 to 10 range. If you're fishing for the bigger boys, jump up there a little bit. Uh, when it comes to my circle hooks, I, you know, the smallest I'll go is about an 8 aught um, trocar circle hook and I'll go up to about a 12 for the bigger fish as well. Um, a lot of the time when you have a more limber rod instead of that fast action rod like I talked about, if you have a more limber one, that's a better choice to put your circle hooks on and just reel into those sharks until they load up and just kind of shake your rod tip and do like little tiny hook sets to drive it through those teeth so it'll plant into the corner of the mouth. You're right. Rainbow trout. One of those green ears. Out here trolling some rainbow trout with teeth. Yeah. Big teeth. That looks like a good one. That's a nice oh, one. Wow. That's a nice one. Yeah, where's that? Remove the thing. I'll wake you up. Oh. Hmm? Coming up easy now. He hasn't found his second win yet. There he goes. One to one. Nice one. And now he's about 15. A little thinner. 
put up a great fight. Gotta love it. It's leopard sharks, pound for pound, are just animals. Literally, no, they're animals. <laughs> that last Wait, bump was a good one. Wouldn't you loosen that drag there? Big leopard. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Fighting. Fighting hard in this current. Woo! So much fun. Shark week. Don't worry, just let him hook himself. Oh, he's so oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got quads. Only reason Trying this to keep fish, them separated. Only reason this fish wasn't getting hooked. Because <laughs> we ran out of hands. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. I'll bring it in. I haven't seen him yet. Oh, he's right here, though. It is a my size leopard. Oh! Whoop! Did I just get Are they hooked? Here? Oh, baby! Oh, yep! Yeah. Oh! Here. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the double-headed shark! Oh, here we go! Oh! I got a nice one too. Did you look up again? Huh? That's a nice hit. Oh! That's a thirty-pounder. Nice, dude. All right. Man, he's not done yet. All right. Beautiful fish. Is that a male or female? Male. Male? Not a bad day out on San Francisco Bay. Yeah, baby. First, first day, first day leopard shark fishing. That's a good one. Nice puking on you. It's all right. <laughs> the action is just unreal today. We've got like, uh, what, 12, 12 keeper leopards. Oh, he's long. He's he hooked him! Oh! oh! Yeah, Oh! Oh! Wouldn't it be awesome if he got the ray? <laughs> there we go. the talk. Up. Oh yeah, he's not oh, done yeah. yet. No, he's not. Oh, oh look at that. That's a nice. Nice. Wow. Oh, nice. That was awesome. Sucking line back out. Oh, wow. Nice. I that his drag was a little sticky. That's all right. Fish isn't going over. Nice fish there. He's probably 25, 30 pounds. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't break me off, baby. He's still got a lot of power. He ain't yeah. done yet. Nice. Nice. Let's see if I can swing him in the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tire him out a little bit. Oh. Thanks for watching, guys. Make Hold sure on. to go visit informativefisherman.com. We'll see you next time.